cannot be pacified until there's been payback. This is a wrong kind of anger, obviously, because it's always festering. And, and, and the idea is that at some point that, that there's going to be an action based on that. And that's your intention. Why is it a big deal? Why is it such a big deal to, to hold on to it and, and, and to stew over it? And it's simple. It's because all you need is a good opportunity. Because what you're really saying is, if I could, I'd take that guy out. I'm just waiting for a chance. And that's what Jesus is saying. That kind of deep-rooted anger is bad. It's bad for you. It's bad for them. And so it's wrong. Now I want you to think about this. There are people that have done things to our country. There are people that have done things to you. And there are, there are people in my own life that, that I, I really have to wrestle with the idea of if they stepped out on the road, I wonder if I'd turn left. Okay, I'm, I'm honest. Sorry. That's not right. It's not good. It's not good. In fact, it's wrong. And, and the scary part is, is that if that person realizing their sin has asked for forgiveness, God forgave them. And if they come to me, then I have a choice to forgive or not. And I can even forgive even if they don't ask. We've talked about that before. A deep-rooted anger that's just waiting for a cheap shot. Maybe it's just to tell somebody. Maybe it's to take them out literally. Jesus is saying that's not good. It's not a good thing. Jesus also condemned a selfish anger. It's an anger, in, in James 1.20 it says, the anger of a man does not ever show itself in righteousness. Put away all anger, it says in Colossians. Not some, put away all anger. And it's because when anger comes into a situation, you can't ever do anything logically anymore. You can be having a conversation about the remote control, but if somebody gets mad, now we're not talking about the remote control, are we? We're talking about the dog peeing on the carpet, we're talking about the kids who can't put toys away, and pretty soon it's your mom, and then it's your mom, and then you know we're back at the, the impasse. Because anger causes people to lose perspective. Not only lose control, but to lose perspective. There's a second form of murder, according to Jewish law, which, used, which would involve the use of words. Um, this action was actually uh, against the law. It was forbidden by Jewish teachers. And it was called the sin of oppression or the sin of insult. Oppression as in me holding you down. And it was for me to go around and talk bad about you and basically murder your character or murder your, your reputation. The Jews had a saying, listen to this, there are three classes which will go to, to Gehenna and not return. The adulterer, he who puts his neighbor openly to shame, and he who gives his neighbor an insulting name. So to the Jews, it was a big deal to not go around and slander people's names and go around and talk bad about them. Big deal. From heaven's perspective, anger, whether it's in the heart or the tongue, is not acceptable. Whether it's in the heart or the tongue, anger is not acceptable. The text uses a word, um, R-A-C-A, -A, raka is, is how it's pronounced. It's not actually a word. <clears throat> It's actually a tone of voice. It would be like us going, idiot, like that, instead of just idiot. Rocket is, is a way of expressing. It, 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 and it was meant to do one thing. It was meant to deliberately hurt the reputation or the feelings of the other person. Okay, it's, it's like if you, um, if you have an affectionate term with someone, but you say it in the wrong tone of voice, it's no longer affectionate. And, and raka was, what was a, a phrase that was used to, um, to talk about what it is to just openly disrespect somebody simply by the tone of the voice. Unlike the 21st century, <laughs> in Christ's time it was a severe sin to go around and badmouth people. In America in the 21st century, you can make a living at it. Okay? It's called People Magazine and Us Weekly and being a critic and a Hollywood critic and Joan Rivers has made a career out of it. Don Rickles was the best. Okay, Anything to make fun of people, and, and in America, that's okay. Um, I really believe that if we ever had a perfect person in the White House, that the late night TV show guys would be out of a job because that's all they ever make fun of is, is our leadership. And it's okay because it's done in humor, but the reality is there's always a thread of truth, even when we're funny, Always a thread of truth about how you feel about something. Because I don't make fun of things that I hold sacred. I'm not going to make fun of my family. I'm not going to make fun of my parents. I'm not going to make fun of my church. Because those things are sacred to me. But I have other things I'll make fun of. You know? but, but somehow in our culture, we've lost um, 
the respect that, that comes out of our mouth for other people. We really, really have. And this is one place where life probably was better back in uh, Pleasantville. The bizarre movie reference comes out of nowhere. 